which I've had forever and I bought because I thought they were pretty and I haven't read them. So <laughs> let me know. Oh my God, I keep saying let me know. Girl, I hear you as the ticket out. I loved you. That was a really weird voice. Be a big, like, big, be, 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 be a good booktuber. In the Ellie Hat Ellery, hopefully not stumble over our words when we're saying it, but it's all about the series. Hi everybody, it's Audrey, and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. And welcome to another one of my non-TBR TBRs in celebration of series September. So if you saw my last video about recommendations of series to read for series September, then you know that I was gonna film a video of some things that I would like to read. We'll see if I read them and we're just gonna see what happens. But there is a bingo board, Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand, Krista from Books and Jams are hosting series September. I will link their videos down below once again for you guys. And this is just low key, all the fun, just getting all of us to read series. Hopefully not stumble over our words when we're saying it, but it's all about the series. And I am someone who is all about the series and always looking for a reason to get into one, get back into one, to pick up where I left off. So I had a laundry list of recommendations in the first video. I have a laundry list of books that I would like to read. I'm not reading all of these books, but this is a perfect excuse to pull them off the shelf, to put them back in front of my face, and then we're all just going to get to be pleasantly surprised to see which way the wind blows and which way my mood blows to see what I pick up in September. So in absolutely no particular order, these are the books that I picked. So the first book I have is so tiny, which what a great thing for a month long readathon. And this is called Killjoy by Holly Jackson. So she wrote the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. And this is actually a prequel to that three book series, which I recommended in my first video. And I loved that series. And this book actually came out in 2021, but it was not available at the time. And it was part of like a special promotion that was done. And then this popped up on Book Depository and I just grabbed it. So it's very tiny. It's a novella, like I said, a prequel to the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. And in this one, it is Pippa and her friends are at a 1920s themed murder mystery party. And it says, but when the game begins, Pip finds herself drawn into the make-believe world of intrigue, deception, and murder. So Pip gets to play detective. And this is where it all began. So I'm very excited for this. And I've been holding it on purpose for series September. And then I have not been holding these books for series September because I've had them for a really long time. <laughs> the first one is The Talented Mr. Ripley by Patricia Highsmith. I have seen this movie a whole bunch of times, so I do know this story. I don't know if the book is fully translated to the movie, like if the movie completely honors the book, that I'm not sure of. But this is one of those books that I have wanted to read for a really long time and have not made the time to do so. And Anyone who talks about being a thriller writer, a mystery writer, always harkens back to Patricia Highsmith. She's so smart and Strangers on a Train was absolutely amazing. And I almost feel like I've put off reading this book just because I've seen the movie. So I feel like I've known the story, but there's an entire Ripley series and this is book number one in it. So again, a great time to actually read it. So it looks like Ripley's Game, Ripley Underground, The Boy Who Followed Ripley. <laughs> There's a few books to read here, but I would love to actually read this and then rewatch the movie again. Any excuse to see some Matt Damon and Jude Law and Gwyneth Paltrow together and some Italy, I'm totally down for that as well. But Ripley is definitely a contender, as is The Marlowe Murder Club. So this is going to have a book number two, which makes it qualify for this series, even though it hasn't come out yet. So this is another one that I snatched up because I was gonna read it immediately. I know I'm, I'm one of those people who I'm like, I'm gonna buy it from Book Depository so I can read it right away and then haven't read it. So this is by Robert Thorogood and this says, some puzzles can be fatal. So the description on this one is, to solve an impossible murder, you need an impossible hero. Agatha Christie with a modern twist. So in this one, we're following 77 year old Judith Potts and she lives alone in a faded mansion in Marlowe, sets crosswords for the times and there's no man in her life to tell her what to do or how much whiskey to drink. One evening while out swimming in the Thames, Judith witnesses a brutal murder. When the local police don't believe her story, Judith and two unlikely friends decide to investigate for themselves and together they are the Marlowe Murder Club. So this definitely was giving me the vibes of, I have it on my top shelf, Richard Oseman. 
The Thursday Murder Club, which is also kind of another low-key contender. The third book in that either just came out or is coming out soon. I actually bought that for my dad and he read it and then gifted it back to me to read. So I just feel like these could be definitely fun books. And again, perfect time. This also, it's giving me like a little bit of like only murders vibes just with the flashlight like as if you're looking into the windows and i love the cover of this with the crossword puzzle so i thought that could be fun and like a bit of a i don't know if it's cozy necessarily but just a little bit different from the real murdery stuff that i definitely like and even though there's murder in that too so we'll see how dark it goes but speaking of real murdery another book that is a contender for me is book number two in the ragdoll series which is hangman so I have talked ad nauseum about Ragdoll by Daniel Cole, and that follows Wolf, Fox, and Emily Baxter. They are detectives. They are called to the scene of a very gruesome murder, which is six different people's body parts stitched together to make one person. It's, it's, it's like as awful as it sounds. And then the killer issues a list of his next six victims, and Wolf's name is the sixth on the list. So that book is all about figuring out who the six people in the original body are and trying to prevent the killer from killing the next six people. And there is incredible dark humor to that and incredible darkness period in that book. Audiobook is tremendous. I did a little bit of both and this is where the story continues. So I don't want to tell you what Hangman is about because it's obviously going to give away stuff from Ragdoll. But I'm excited for this and I looked ahead and the same audiobook narrator from Ragdoll narrates Hangman, which also makes me just want to read it more because he was tremendous and I don't know his name off the top of my head. So insert here. Another book I didn't have on my list, but as I turn around I see it, is The Stranger Diaries by Ellie Griffiths. So this is another one that immediately snatched it up because I was going to read it and I haven't. But part of what I would love to do in September is to weave in some dark academia with my series because tis the season. And this book takes place at a college. So in this one, we have Claire Cassidy and she's a high school English teacher specializing in a Gothic writer. And she teaches a course on him every year. So in this one, her life is colliding with the storylines of her favorite literature. And there is a killer and all the creepy, creepy things. So this is giving me a little bit of a vibe of Runtime by Katherine Ryan Howard, which I just read, but have not formally reviewed here yet, where in that book we have an actress who is on the set of a horror movie and her real life is starting to resemble the things that are happening in the horror movie. This came out first, but sort of that similar, the horror happening in real life, life imitating art, art imitating life, who can tell? But this one says, death lies between the lines when the events of a dark story start coming true in this haunting modern Gothic mystery, perfect for fans of Magpie Murders and The Lake House, which I haven't read. But Magpie Murders, that Anthony Horowitz series is also another great one if you guys are looking for a series. And I actually need to get caught up in that series. So that would be one I could read as well as his Daniel Hawthorne series is another one I need to be caught up in. So look at me on the fly, coming up with ideas. <laughs> so another book that I plan to read and I've been saving for series September is Husband Material by Alexis Hall. So I read Boy From Material in July. I absolutely loved it. It was, I feel like the last time I talked about it, I was only halfway through and I was like, it's so funny. It's very funny, but there's also a lot of weight not like totally heaviness but it definitely de like delves into some darker subjects and some heavier emotions and it was so well done there's tons of levity and humor to that book but there's also much more heart and again just sort of like some some grief and some pain and just coming to terms with yourself in a lot of ways and confronting your family and confronting your past. And I just really, really loved it. So I will be very interested to see where this book goes next. I did a combo of reading an audiobook of the first book and my plan would probably be to do the same because the audiobook was so great, but I also could not help myself from picking it up. So Husband Material, Sorry the Light's Reflecting is on my list, as is, okay, I'm gonna need two hands for this one. So many, many years ago, I read Vicious by V.E. Schwab. This is, this is the, I feel like every video has a point where you get to judge me. 
So I read, oh, it's down here. I don't think you're, oh yeah, you can see it. So Vicious by V.E. Schwab. And I was like, I'm gonna read Vengeful immediately, la la la. Never read Vengeful. And then I thought it would be fun to reread Vicious and then read Vengeful. And then I thought it would be even more fun to <laughs> treat myself <laughs> to these insanely beautiful special edition books covers that they have for the two books. Vengeful's huge, by the way, which makes me a little bit nervous. Vicious feels completely manageable. So I did that. And this was a pretty recent decision. This has not shown up in a book haul yet. So I would still like to reread Vicious and then read Vengeful. So that is my plan. These books are so crazy beautiful. They've got like these great end papers and then they've got these super cool embossed covers. This was so unnecessary, but I have been hemming and hawing over these covers for a really long time. And I finally, I had a gift card and I pulled the trigger and I decided this was like the necessary choice to make. So beautiful end covers. You're getting like a mini book haul in the middle of this video. Beautiful and embossed. And there we go. So Vicious and Vengeful is on my list of books to read. Another book that would be perfect for a series, this is part of a three book series. And this is Death Notice by Todd Ritter, which is the artist later known as Riley Sager. So this is his original series in his original name slash his real name, his original name. And these are a police detective in Pennsylvania. So I found all three of these through some hardcore online thrifting. I have not started this series yet, but I'm really interested to see sort of like where it all began. These books have nothing to do with his later Riley Sager books. They are, as I said, like about a police detective and I just think it will be really interesting to see. So I, you guys know, I'm a diehard fan of his and I just want to see what all the hype is about or is there hype about these books? I don't even know, but got them, want to read them. I have two more books that I picked up recently. There's going to be a book haul coming just so you guys know. And this is The Family Remains by Lisa Jewell. So this came out pretty recently and this is the sequel to The Family Upstairs, which I read a few months ago in anticipation of this coming out and I loved it. And I have, I was gonna say a complicated relationship with Lisa Jewell, but it's not complicated at all. I've loved everything that she's ever written. I started reading her back in the early days when she was writing contemporary, women's fiction, chick lit, whatever we wanna call it. Ralph's Party, her first book, I absolutely loved it. I hate myself for having unhauled it during one of my moves and I'm basically gonna repurchase it. I don't know if anybody's ever done that before. Do you unhaul books and then buy them again when you realize that you've made a mistake? So anyway, I used to read her a ton, then I stopped, then I started, then I stopped for no good reason, but then I'll read one of her books, like The Family Upstairs. I'm like, why am I not reading her every single year as I should be? So. This is a continuation of The Family Upstairs. And this is one of those books which I'm finding this is gonna happen with when I talk about this book as well. A lot of books I see now are being pitched as standalone series, sort of implying that you can jump in at any point and not worry that you haven't read other books in the series at the beginning of the series. So my advice would be to read The Family Upstairs because A, it's amazing. And I can't imagine this will sort of strike home the same way if you haven't, but not having read this, I don't really know for sure. But in this one, we will get to see some of our characters from the first book. I wanna say this picks up literally a week after the first book ends. And then we get some new characters introduced here. So the first book completely resolved a mystery, but there were also some things that were dangling in that book that could have just been left unresolved, but get to be picked up in this book. So I'm very excited for this. I'm excited for more Lisa Jewell. This is probably one of my favorite covers of the year. It's that iridescent. I don't know if it's showing up well on camera, but jazzed for this one. And then another book, actually the second book, Girl Forgotten, so glad I'm in a good seat today. <laughs> it's the second book, which I didn't realize this was part of a series, but again, series standalone, implying you don't need to read this book to, this is Pieces of Her by Karen Slaughter. Be a big, like big, be, 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 be a good booktuber. Talk about the books. 
So I picked this up from my library's book room, which reopened on a limited basis. And I got this for $2 and it's mint. There's a little bit of dent on the top of the cover, but <laughs> I just like, I wasn't gonna get it. And then I was like, you know, I'm just gonna get this. So I was not planning to read pieces of her before Girl Forgotten, but when I talked about Girl Forgotten in my most anticipated in August, a few people chimed in and then Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand, who was a diehard Karen Slaughter fan, also told me, she was like, this is also like the second book in a series. I had no idea because I'm not a big Karen Slaughter reader. I'm a big fan of Karen Slaughter as a writer. Makes sense. And now I kind of feel like, well, I might as well just start where it all began because that feels like that's what I should do. So this book, I don't even know what it's about. It says, what if the person you thought you knew best turns out to be someone you never knew at all? So in this one, we're following Andrea Oliver and her mother, Laura. So this says, Andrea knows that Laura is everything she isn't, confident, settled, sure of herself. So they are at the mall and it says, it is a visit that is shattered by an act of horrifying violence that reveals a completely different side of Laura, a cool woman who calmly faces down a murderer. So mother-daughter vibes big time. I don't know what else happens in this. I'm kind of content to go into this one pretty blind. I know very little about Girl Forgotten as well, other than we get dual timelines. There's like a dead prom queen, which got me really excited about this book. And then I think it's like a 20 years later detective investigation trying to tie together, I think like a missing girl in the present and then the missing girl in the past, maybe. I'm also kind of spitballing on that one. So yes, this is also on my list. I also plan to read The Final Gambit by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. That comes out on August 30th. I have pre-ordered it. So that is the third book in the Inheritance Game series. That's high on my list to read. I'm totally gonna read that book. I'm not even gonna say it's high on my list. That is one, I will say it here and I will say it now. I 1000% I'm going to read for series September. And then I have, where's the other book I wanted to talk to you guys about? And by other book, I mean three other books. So I mentioned these in my first, video of suggestions. So this is All the Best Lies by Joanna Schaffenhausen. So this is the first of five books. I actually misspoke in my first video and said there were only four in the Ellery Hathaway series. So she is a detective. In the first two books, we have her partnering with an FBI agent, Reed Markham. I don't know what happens after that, so we will find out. But I very much enjoyed that. The first book, she was a survivor of a serial killer when she was a child. And then we meet her as an adult when she is a police detective outside of Boston and then some weird stuff starts to happen in the present day that is sort of reminiscent to what happened to her as a kid and then we sort of follow along her story so we will see and then I also mentioned another Jennifer Lynn Barnes series The Naturals so I read this book years ago I think I figured out it was like 2019 and this is kind of teenage FBI vibes they wind up getting recruited by the FBI because they each have like a natural talent not in a supernatural way and it is sort of pitched as like criminal minds. They're supposed to solve cold cases. My plan would be to reread this because again, it's been years and I really don't remember the details of it. And then to continue in the series. So I just very much enjoyed this. It was well done. There's a little bit of love in this, like romance, a little bit of love, a little bit of romance, some good, just messy teenage stuff. I don't remember finding it like particularly angsty. I just remember finding it like particularly engrossing. So I would like to go back to this series and keep on going in it. And then I would also like to, I always feel like when I say like, I would like to do this. I mean, obviously I can do whatever I want, but <laughs> I can't control my mood and my mood tells me what to do and what to read next. But again, Rachel by Marion Keys. So this is the sequel to Rachel's Holiday. And I reread that earlier this year with the intent of diving right into this, which I did not do, but I would like to do. And this follows Rachel 20 years later, I wanna say, and we'll just see where she's at now. So I'm, I'm really curious. And I mean, it's been here the entire time, so I should probably just, you know, get her done because I'm a huge Marion Keys fan. And I wanna know what happens to Rachel next. I wanna know what the rest of her story is. And I said this before too, but in case you didn't watch that first video, the audiobook for Rachel's Holiday narrated by Marion Keys is absolutely brilliant. So highly recommend it. And then I'll let you know what I think of this one. And then some other possibilities continue in the Patricia Cornwell, K. Scarpetta series. I had started to reread that a couple years ago. I have a long way to go, but would love to get back into that as well. 
and then I'm gonna refer to my list right here and see what I've missed. I do wanna work on a reread of Bear Town by Frederick Bachman and Us Against You before the winners comes out at the end of September. I also wanna read, and where is she? Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. So this has all the dark academia vibes. The second book in this series comes out in January, I wanna say. This is like a little bit supernatural and I think a little bit supposed to be grounded in reality at Yale. The cover of the second book really creeps me out with the rabbit. I'll pop it up here so you guys can see it if you haven't seen it yet, which makes me like a little bit like, oh geez, man, I don't know if I wanna have this book on my shelf, but <laughs> I should probably read the first book. Because I almost did that knee-jerk thing where I was going to pre-order it and I'm like, what are you doing? You haven't even read the first book. You don't even know if you like this series. So Ninth House is definitely a contender as well for me. And then let me see if I'm missing anything. Oh, You Love Me by Carolyn Kepnes. So that is here? No, you guys can't see that one. So this is the third in the You series with Joe Goldberg. So it's You, Hidden Bodies, and then You Love Me. And I just haven't read it yet, so I'm very curious. I loved You. That was a really weird voice. I loved You. I was hmm, on Hidden Bodies. I think this is more You-ish. I also know that it does not follow the series. I only watched season one of the Netflix series, and then I quit on season two because it was just already going in like a different direction, like two episodes in, and then I quit Netflix. So I have not gotten back to that yet, but would like to read You Love Me, because I have it, and I need to know what it's all about. Also in the Lee Bardugo family, they're in my room, Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, which I've had forever and I bought because I thought they were pretty and I haven't read them. So <laughs> those are contenders. You guys, I'm a mess. I have The Retreat by Sarah Pierce, which is the second book from the Sanatorium series. And that is another detective series. I'm expecting kind of gothic slow burn. That's an isolated spa on an island. People start to get murdered. So that feels very Agatha Christie vibes to me. That's a contender. My entire world is contenders. Hello Transcriber by Hannah Morrissey. Her second book comes out, I'm doing a lot of fingers today, in December and I would like to read the first one first. I actually have the arc of the second one from NetGalley. So, where are you, girl? Hello, transcribers up here. So she is a police transcriber and she winds up getting caught up in a mystery. So this one takes place in Wisconsin and we are following police transcriber Hazel Greenlee. And it says, she listens as detectives divulge Black Harbor's gruesome secrets. Mm, there's that word again, gruesome, from Ragdoll. So Hazel is an aspiring novelist and she thinks that writing a book could help, she thinks that writing a book could be her only ticket out of this frozen hellscape. But her life isn't exactly brimming with inspiration. Girl, I hear you as the ticket out. And then her neighbor confesses to hiding the corpse of an overdose victim. Why am I not reading this book? So. That and so much more happens <laughs> in Hello Transcriber. So this is another one that I feel like I need to be reading. I feel like I need to be reading all these books. This is the only problem when I do things like this is I wanna read all the books and then I get overwhelmed and then I get decision fatigue and I don't know what to do. So, taking a breath. And then one more book that I would like to read that I've talked about. Ugh. It's up too high. Last one is The Tenant by Katrine Engberg. So I've talked about this one before too. This is the first book in what is currently a three book series. And oh, this one's just got the map in it too. So this one also has writer vibes to it. And it says, when a young woman is discovered brutally murdered in her apartment with an intricate pattern of lines carved into her face, Copenhagen police detectives Jep Corner and Annette Warner, I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly, are assigned to the crime. So they establish a link between the victim and her landlady, who's a bit too fond of drink and who's the host of raucous dinner parties with her artist friends. The landlady is also a budding novelist and when this woman turns up as a murder victim in the still unfinished mystery she's writing, the link between fiction and real life grows more urgent and more dangerous. So also like Stranger Diary feels to it. So I have heard that this series gets better as it goes, which is not totally unusual in a book series. And I obviously need to start at the beginning. So I was so tempted to pick up The Harbor, which is the third book in the series because it's half off right now, but I haven't done it. 
but I really want to. So this is also on my list. And I mean, obviously I will read series all year long, but I was trying to pick some ones that I've talked about before and haven't picked up yet. And also books that I have not really talked about a ton or maybe haven't talked about in a while. So let me know what you guys think. What should I read? Oh my goodness, I don't even know. I'm also like super excited talking about all these books. So let me know, let me know, let me know. What are you guys reading? Are you doing series September? Do you have any recommendations of like where to begin with any of the books that I picked up or anything that you would like to see me read? Maybe I'll take a collective suggestion from the audience of one of the books to pick up, but I'm just excited for it. And again, I love me a series all year round and what an excuse to like do a bingo board and like, do stuff with your friends. I just feel like it's great fun. That's gonna do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for sticking with it. I know it was long and rambly and like a little chaotic and you know, me basically. So <laughs> I appreciate you guys being here. So until next time you guys, take care and I will see you when I see you. Bye everybody.